think they're talking about us. No way. Baldur's Gate 3 is a very old school tactical style RPG made by Laren Studios. Now I went into this game completely blind without doing much prior research and I've been spending the better half of my weekend playing it. Oh my god. What do I do? Baldur's Gate 3 has you create a character Dungeons yeah. and Dragons style, having you select their race, subrace, appearance, background, class, subclass, and there's just a lot of customization options going on here, including genitals. Genitals. Oh man, they they do have genitals. <laughs> And while this can seem overwhelming, once you get into the game a little bit, you can actually adjust your class for a price, however. A matter of coin. This game has a very old school RPG feel through looks, play style, menus, and visual styling. Visually, this game looks decent, the cutscenes look great, and the character models can look okay, but it can be really funky sometimes, and I wouldn't call it ugly or offensive in any way, but it can be kind of mid sometimes when you're just running around the map generally. <laughs> Now because it embraces this old school style, I can see it not being for everyone, and a little bit of a turnoff for the newer generation of gamers, but that said, it could also be their first exposure as well. This style of game is somewhat slow and methodical, but that doesn't mean it's not engaging at all. It's definitely the type of game where you can get lost for hours and hours as you're exploring the map and just making choices. That also means though, this is the type of game where if you make the wrong turn, you can end up somewhere that's just way too strong for you. I went away from the quest for a while, where they were directing me, and I got put in some areas that my characters just stood absolutely no chance in. Maybe I I could have survived if I was some type of tactical genius, but I'm just not that guy. Well, that was interesting. And combat can seem very overwhelming, at the start anyway. There's a lot of buttons and menus, and while there is a tutorial, it doesn't feel like it does the best job at setting you up to get you going. Found myself somewhat confused for a little while, trying to figure out what you can and cannot do. However, once it does click, it feels really good and starts making sense. <laughs> I do think a lot of these issues can be solved through reading basic prompts and viewing the control shortcuts, but I feel like most players aren't going to read that and don't want to read an operating manual before they start playing. We, we don't do that here. That means that if you want something where you just hit buttons and feel good, this probably isn't going to be the best game for you. The combat being a tactical turn-based style means that characters take turns based on their movement as well as stats and perks you have chosen. Combat has you using one main action with your character as well as being able to use various spells, but the spells work a little differently than you're used to as they don't use a mana system and they only recharge after you've rested at camp. Now there's a lot of interesting things that can be done inside of combat. Using the environment is key. You can pull down statues and push Whoa. characters off holes and into ledges. You can even adjust the terrain, making them slip and fall on ice or oil, and even set the ground ablaze, calling burning to anyone who walks through it. And you can also additionally dip your weapons in the fire to get yourself an additional damage buff. You could also go ahead and use water to clear any of those things on the ground, but this will allow ice and thunder spells to start doing more damage. There really just is a lot of expressiveness and creative freedom you have inside of battle, allowing you to do interesting things. And you can't just blindly go and attacking hoping for the best in most cases. Now both in combat and outside of combat, movement can be a little annoying sometimes as sometimes the auto path thing will walk you through something you don't want them to go through, which can cause your character to get ambushed and make the battle go down south real quick. Oh my god, you idiots. Could I be micromanaging better? Sure, but it's just frustrating when the pathing has them running through things that could easily be avoided. Now the story starts out interesting enough. You get possessed by a mind flayer and he gives you a nice brain buddy to keep you company. This parasite cyclically links you to other folks who also have the brain worm, and over time this will eventually turn you into a mind flayer. And the story is actually doing a pretty good job of engaging me. Sometimes the narrator even pops in, peppering up the dialogue a little bit. As you wake, the tadpole squirms in your skull. Ugh. But I feel like most of the story is going to be revolving around the side quests and the choices you're making. And the story can be as serious and as goofy as you want, as sometimes this game will put you in some wild scenarios, like catching a bugbear with her pants down, making sweet art with a female ogre. No. Oh. What in the world? <laughs> what? Uh, it's gonna back away soon. Oh boy. Now I have two characters going on at this point, one single player and one multiplayer, and I'm already seeing how some of the differences in the story are occurring. There was one scene in the beginning that was the same on both, but we eventually got to a point where I was starting to see some wild differences. For example, my multiplayer game, in the first town my friend somehow kicked off a violent riot, where in my solo game, I'm trying to patch these issues. 
I am kind of curious though, because in some games of this genre, it can feel like the choices matter, but really it's just different paths to the same destination. So I'm curious if this is going to have multiple different destinations as opposed to just different walks. But this game does want you to be an RPG and encourages you to create a character where you can either be yourself or be a nerd and make a character with a persona. For example, in my solo game, I'm playing the Eggplant Knight, who's a vengeance paladin who believes in moral authority, although his moral compass can be a little bit off, and he will punish harshly for any crimes that he, that he deems immoral. And he just wants the parasite out of his head instead of trying to wield the power that it gives. Now my multiplayer character is actually me trying to be a monk modeled after Chun-Li, so when I am player? able to make choices in the multiplayer mode, I'm going to do it according to how I think Chun-Li would act. Now the one drawback is a multiplayer made character is going to be safe to the host's game, meaning Chun-Li technically isn't mine. So while I did make Chun-Li and I chose her paths and everything, I don't actually get to keep her, and she functions as an extra character in my friend's game who he can actually select and play himself. And this is a little disappointing since you can't take your own characters and bring them into other people's games and continuing leveling them up on your own. That said, you can transfer the save file to another player so that they can play on their own offline, but I do still think how it's fun that you can get a game going in a multiplayer session and have a campaign with your friends. <laughs> Now overall I'm really enjoying this game and exploring the world, and I haven't gotten terribly far yet, but it does seem pretty filled with content so far. My fear is that it is only content heavy at the start and it might drop off, but we'll have to see how that goes. That said, this is a complete game that you're being given, and the devs have said they wanted to release a full game, and they aren't really planning on doing any DLC packs or gear and weapon bundles or anything like that. That said, I can easily see if the game sells well, which it seems to be doing, they could definitely do a DLC or an expansion down the line. And this game does seem to be getting really amazing reception, and it really is a great game for this style. Is it something for the mainstream? I wouldn't really say so. It is a little more of a niche audience, but it is something you can really sink your claws into, and it keeps wanting you to play more and more and more. It does like a little of the flash and the razzle-dazzle that you see in AAA games, but a lot of times those things are more style than substance. Now I don't really like giving scores to games unless I've fully beaten them, but this game's going to take a while and who knows how long that'll be. So for now, I think I'm going to stick with an 8.5. The main reason being, I think the UI can be a little rough at times, as well as the inventory management. How I would fix this, I'm not quite sure, which is why I'm not really going to grill it for it, but I also wish traversal would be a little bit easier as well. For example, characters auto-jumping when you try to click on certain areas would just be really helpful, and I wish when you looked at the whole map, you could just ping a faraway spot and the characters would start heading in that direction. I do think overall this is a great game, but it does have a very niche audience, and given how much more popular D&D is these days, I could see it working for some folks where it usually wouldn't, and it could also be a good gateway into old school tactical turn-based games, or D&D in general. That said, it is definitely a nerd game, but I guess being a nerd is cool now, right? As always, if you've made it this far, please like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know how much of an idiot I am. Thank you. I know we got him. We got him, boys. Thank <laughs> you.